Thanksgiving break. We have a great show for you today, starting with an interview with Dr. Jeffrey Sachs. We talked to Dr. Sachs earlier this week about Ukraine, Nord Stream, and government spending. Here's our conversation about COVID-19. Hmm. Switching topics um, a little bit, I saw it just reported uh, that the U.S. Um, Army is going to start um, inviting people who were discharged for refusing the COVID vaccine um, to have their records um, cleansed of that uh, at a at a time where we're trying to build back up the U.S. Army. They're struggling with recruitment drives everywhere, you know, a dangerous time in the world where there's all these conflicts um, going on. Um, what is your thinking about how the narrative around um, compelling people on certain health issues with respect to COVID has, uh, has changed over the last um, several years of the pandemic? Well, I got to look at this uh, closely as a chairman of a commission for the medical journal Lancet. And the sad part of this, not with respect to the vaccine per se, but with respect to the origin of the virus is that it's yet another case of massive government lying. So we have since discovered from the start that what the, the government told us about the quote unquote, natural origins of this virus were hokey and really amounting to scientific fraud, actually, because a number of scientists produced a, a study in March uh, 2020, March 2020, uh, called the proximal origins of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes uh, COVID-19, claiming that it was overwhelming evidence that it was natural. And we now know that they didn't even believe that as they were writing it because they knew that there were so many hints uh, that this could well have come out of a US lab or out of a Chinese lab or out of a US-China partnership in the research. So the problem with trusting anything is when we have secretive government that is telling us lies it just generates a huge amount of distrust about everything. Yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things I find about you is that because you were uh, in your position at Lancet and because you're one of the few uh, people who was calling or calling out um, the possibility that lab leak origin theory was legitimate early, uh, and you're one of the few people in that space who was more left-coded as opposed to right-coded, I think it, there was a lot of much-needed credibility um, that you brought to the conversation as people were questioning whether or not to follow what the mainstream media was saying at the time, which was that to even entertain lab leak theory meant you were a conspiracy theorist or whether to treat it seriously. Now that we're in a different place in the discourse where many more people are treating it seriously, I wonder what you think the gaps are uh, in, in kind of the public reporting in terms of continuing to pursue um, answers about who was responsible for lab leak. Robbie and I have these conversations often where there is often a focus on Dr. Fauci, who is, of course, no longer in office. Um, and there is this kind of open question, where do we go next? Where should the in investigation go? Uh, and should Democrats not be leaving this investigation largely up to the right side of the aisle? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, I fell right into the mainstream story at the beginning because there was this important publication uh, in Nature, which is a major scientific uh, journal that said overwhelming evidence it was natural. So I spent the first uh, months explaining to my friends, oh, all this stuff about conspiracy uh, is uh, coming out of a lab and so forth. There's so much hokum and political manipulation. And then I was chair of a commission, so uh, studying this step by step and being briefed by scientists and, and then watching the wonderful work of uh, not the mainstream media, which completely neglected this, but The Intercept and US Right to Know and whistleblowers who started letting us in on what was really said inside was shocking. And at one point I confronted one of the people on my own commission and said, show me such and such document. He said, oh, my lawyers say, I, I can't show you that. And I said, well, you can't be on the commission. We're a transparent yeah. commission. And I began to really see close up that there was so much lying coming out of NIH, coming out of Fauci, coming out of uh, 
unfortunately, uh, the, the government protecting all of this, and now it's spilling out. But what is true to this moment, weirdly, the Democrats don't want to look. So where Congress is looking is on the House side, where there's a majority Republicans who in the House Oversight Committee are looking into this. But on the Senate side with the Democratic majority, it is absolutely circle the wagons around Fauci who's not even there or around NIH or around God knows what. And as, as a, someone who has been a lifelong Democrat, but I've left the party because I don't wanna have anything to do with either of these parties <laughs> right now. Uh, I have to say that it's shocking to me that Democratic senators can't understand this is not a partisan issue. This is a life and death issue. What kind of research is going on? What kind of laboratory manipulations going on? What is going on under what we euphemistically, I probably or perhaps call our biodefense research, because who knows what it really is. Hmm. But I have gotten to understand well that there is a tremendous amount of dangerous research that is not supervised and it would behoove our Democratic senators, as well as the Republicans, to find out what's happening. This is not about getting Fauci. This is not about the past. This is about right now, what is happening in these laboratories? Because the fact of the matter is, our very, very clever scientists know all about manipulating viruses. They know all about gain of function research. They know how to construct new viruses that are extremely dangerous by putting in pieces into existing viruses, pieces like the now infamous furin cleavage site, which is part of the genome of the COVID virus that makes it so infectious. And that was the object of research by US scientists precisely to see if you put that piece into an existing virus, what happens to it? Well, duh, isn't that research a little dangerous? But that research was going on, we know. And that is what makes many people think this came out of a lab. And the most ingenious people who made those systems, I don't know whether I should name names, but we've got scientists in the United States that do this, that are at the cutting edge, that were under Fauci's funding and in his shop and working with the laboratories like Rocky Mountain Lab and others. And there's just a lot of reason to open those books to scrutiny right now. And I can tell you, Senator Rand Paul has been trying on the Senate side to get some Democrats to not view this as a partisan issue, but as an urgent scientific and practical issue. And he asked me to talk to my Democratic senator friends over the years, and they will not touch this. Mm. What is going on? Oh. This is not a partisan issue, and it's a shame on the Democrats in the Senate that they will not open a proper investigation because it's not about the past, it's about now. What research is going on? What is this biodefense research? What is NIH funding? What is this manipulation taking place? We need to know this. Yeah, it's one of the most important questions ever asked, how this disease that killed millions of people originated. And you're absolutely right that it need not be a partisan issue. It's not an issue, frankly, uh, blessedly, that puts the Democratic Party or the Republican Party more in trouble if it turns out Absolutely. one way, except for the fact that Democrats have decided to some made this conscious decision to be the party that defends, I guess, health bureaucrats or shields them from accountability, which is which is a huge shame. And and the, that's the stake now. But you're you're absolutely right that it doesn't need to be that way at all. And this should be basic accountability. And I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you've you've worked and tried to open the books. I want to I want to know, you know, what the Energy Department knows that led them to their to their conclusion. If the government has better evidence than we've been shown about the early infection of the scientists at the lab, that was something the Wall Street Journal's mentioned and others. I would love to see that 
that intelligence. And actually, right, Congress voted to declassify it and Biden signed it and then we still didn't really get it. So it's a, it's a yeah. frustrating amount of, um, of shielding from the public what they ought to know. Robbie, it, it is so incredible that this became a partisan issue. I could never have guessed. Maybe it's the lack of my imagination. Why Democrats would think that an honest accounting is somehow a, a pro-Republican position. So, you know, hope springs eternal. Yeah. Today, Democrats in the Senate, come on. We need to understand what's going on and we need to understand what kind of dangerous research is underway. And we need to understand where this virus came from. Open the books at University of North Carolina. Open the books at Rocky Mountain Labs. Understand the funding by the United States of the teams from University of North Carolina and other universities with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Mm. Let's understand what really Indeed. happened. Dr. Sachs, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to be with you. Thank you.